the wild mountains of Anhui province in eastern China. Mount Huangshan, or Yellow Mountains, where weather conditions change quickly with the seasons and temperatures fluctuate wildly. Home to one of China's most enigmatic primates, the Tibetan macaque. Only found in East Central China, this mountain is their playground. Living in huge family groups with a strict social hierarchy, these monkeys are masters at communicating. It takes the support of a family to survive on these unforgiving cliffs. But no family is without its conflicts. As food grows scarce and tension grows, this troop will need to put aside its differences and work together. This is a year in the life of a Tibetan macaque troop. in the mountains. Numerous granite peaks and rocks emerge from a sea of clouds. This classical Chinese landscape painting come to life is Mount Wangshan, which some call China's most beautiful mountain. This site has inspired an entire school of painting. Situated in the eastern province of Anhui, China, its peaks can reach over 1,800 meters above sea level. This 154 square kilometer UNESCO heritage site is home to over 300 animal species, including one of the largest monkeys found in Asia, the Tibetan macaque also known as Chinese stump-tailed macaques. These monkeys are only found in east-central China. Adept tree climbers, they're often found perched amongst tree branches, but are equally comfortable foraging on the ground. This troop of macaques welcomes the arrival of spring. Wild flowers emerge in the warm sunshine, and the sound of birdsong fills the air. After enduring three months of scarce food in freezing winter, they can finally enjoy the young spring leaves. Tibetan macaques live in mixed-sex groups of up to 100 members with a strict social hierarchy, where their rank in the group determines how they will be treated by other group members. So status is very important. The quickest way to the top? By fighting. Young male macaques often challenge the leader of the troop, because being the emperor means getting the lion's share of food and mating with any female they wish. The current emperor of the troop, Zilong, is the largest and strongest male, but he is facing a surprising challenge from a younger male. To hold on to his position, Zilong must win this battle.
Zilong keeps his title this time. The young male is lucky that he's only been wounded. Some of these fights end in death. Macaque societies function a lot like dictatorships, and the emperor, or dominant male, sits right at the top. So it's no wonder that it's a highly coveted seat. The average tenure for a troop leader is only a year, with the seat often occupied by males around eight to nine years of age. Surprisingly, this will be Zilong's third year in power. And as the emperor, he gets to do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. But there is one member of the troop whose social standing has remained even longer than Zilong's. Dominant female Ye Mei has secured her position by being popular with the current leader and both his predecessors. She has remained a strict empress through three different regimes. Adult males may be the most aggressive troop members, but they only typically make up 15% of the troop. Rather, it's the adult females who have strength in numbers, typically forming 35% of the troop. It's easy to distinguish male from female macaques. Adult males have paler pink faces, while the adult females' faces are redder. And males are the larger sex, weighing up to 17.5 kilograms, while females tip the scales at an average of 13 kilograms. Ye Mei's popularity with Zilong stems partly from the fact that she's very fertile. This year, she's welcomed her third ever child. Infant macaques less than a year old typically account for 20% of the troop. At birth, these babies weigh only 400 grams. They are highly dependent on their mothers for the first few weeks of their lives. Macaque mothers supply nutrition to their babies, breastfeeding them for over a year. They carry their children everywhere with them. New babies are always a cause for celebration, but macaque mothers can usually only invest their time and energy in one baby at a time. So there is one monkey who isn't too happy about the arrival of his new sibling. Born three years ago, Tiang Tiang is Ye Mei's second son. After spending all his life in the bosom of his mother, it's now time for him to grow up. He must learn to survive these mountains on his own without his mother's support and protection. A juvenile, he and his same aged pals typically make up the last 30% of the troop. His first lesson, foraging for food. Tiang Tiang is learning to pick the tastiest and most tender leaves. The rich plant diversity is a delectable feast for Tibetan macaques. And an excellent training ground for a youngster learning to forage. Tibetan macaques are omnivorous. But the bulk of their diet is made up of fruits and leaves. They have cheek pouches that extend down both sides of their neck, like chipmunks or hamsters. The Tibetan macaque is one of the few monkeys that evolved to have cheek pouches, allowing them to store large amounts of food, while keeping their hands free to pick some more. These pouches also contain amylase, an enzyme found in saliva 
which helps start digestion the moment they put food in their mouth. Tiang Tiang seems to do well at feeding himself. He packs a few snacks away for later. By nature, Tibetan macaques are experts of finding edible plants. And one of their favorite foods are the tender leaves that grow in spring. Emperor Zilong knows exactly where to go to find them. The Sihai Grand Canyon, one of the largest in Mount Huangshan. A dense, temperate forest with over 1,400 kinds of plants. It's the perfect place for these Tibetan macaques to spend the rest of their year. Mount Huangshan is also the birthplace of a very unique tea. Known for a delicate fragrance of orchids, Hu Kui Cha, or Monkey King Tea, is named after the Tibetan macaques. Legend has it that a long time ago, a Tibetan macaque left his troop on the hill and headed down towards the villages to search for his missing son. As he passed through the village, he fell very ill. The villagers did their best to care for him, but he passed away from his illness. Out of compassion, they buried him in the mountains. The next year, tea trees began to grow on the macaque's grave. And so, they named the tea after him. A gift from the deceased Monkey King. At their new feeding ground, the family gets settled in. As the dominant male, Emperor Zilong eats first, and he doesn't like to be interrupted. This infant is courting danger, trying to steal the emperor's food. Mount Huangshan in Anhui province, eastern China. Emperor Zilong's Tibetan macaque troop has followed him to this canyon in search of food. But macaque society abides by some strict rules. The emperor eats first, and he doesn't like to share. An infant macaque tries her luck, attempting to snatch food from the chief. After observing Zilong, she makes her move. But he has spotted her, and he's not happy with this amateur thief. This youngster learns the hard way that it's unwise to try and steal food from the emperor. The baby flees, back to the safety of her mother's arms. It's her first taste of just how important it is to respect rank in the troop. As the Empress, Ye Mei is quite aware of this. She's been playing the long game to ensure her babies are protected. Since Tiang Tiang was just a baby, She's allowed him to spend as much time with Zilong as he likes, and the emperor is both protective and tolerant of him. That's good news for a young male trying to survive these mountains. 
In the blink of an eye, spring turns into summer. Summer on Mount Huangshan brings with it beautiful blooming flowers, but also heavy rain. In the humid forests, most of the macaques get some shut-eye. Like most other primates, Tibetan macaques need lots of rest, sleeping for up to 11 hours a day. As soon as the clouds clear, it's back to eating for these monkeys. With their bellies full, it's time for an important social activity, grooming. The monkeys clean each other's coats, removing dirt and parasites, and even dead skin and tangled fur. Social grooming can take up to 15% of the monkey's day. To them, it may be even more important than finding more food. And that's because grooming each other is a way to build good relationships. And it's also a way for them to get on Zilong, the macaque emperor's good side. Lower-ranking males spend more time grooming higher-ranking males than their same-ranked friends. It helps make the seniors less aggressive towards them, and the troop is at peace. But for three-year-old Tiang Tiang, playing with his buddies is a more important activity. In fact, playing boosts key motor skills of young monkeys and helps them grow their muscle systems and brain. Play is also believed to be a way for macaques to try out different social behaviours, which will help them manage their relationships in the future. Suddenly, Tiang Tiang and his friend pick up the little one. They're imitating the adults. This strange behaviour is called bridging, where two macaques simultaneously lift a single infant and touch or lick its genitals while chattering their teeth. This gesture improves relationships between macaques, reducing aggression between them. The baby doesn't seem too happy about it, though. Mount Huangshan is a dream for a Tibetan macaque. With few natural predators, these monkeys don't have to worry too much about getting eaten. But there is one danger that is often overlooked, falling. And from this high up, a fall can be deadly. The cliffs of Mount Huangshan can be near vertical, and it takes confidence and sure-footedness to navigate them safely. Unsurprisingly, infant monkeys are the most susceptible to falling accidents as they traverse the steep mountainsides. This one, thankfully, reaches safety without incident. But one of Tiang Tiang's playmates hasn't been so lucky. This infant has been in an accident. One of its legs hangs limply, unable to cling to its mother. This adult female holds her injured baby tightly. In the wild, up to one out of five baby macaques dies within a year of birth. But all is not lost. Evidence suggests that fractures in young monkeys often heal with relatively little deformity, especially with parental care. This young mother keeps her energy up. There is hope for her child yet.
While the exact moment that juvenile macaques become young adults is unknown, researchers have observed that they reach puberty between four to six years of age. This is where the road splits for young male and female macaques. Three-year-old Tiang Tiang will soon be turning into an adult male. And with age, he will become independent and have to leave his troop. Macaque society norms dictate that males will leave home, while the females will remain and tussle for rank. Just another phase of life as a macaque grows up. It's summertime on Mount Wangshan in Anhui province, eastern China. Juvenile Tibetan macaques roam the evergreen forests, playing on trees that extend out of cliffs high above the ground. They're learning all the things they need to know as they grow up. But for macaques on the cusp of adulthood, it is time for a change. As hormones surge, Jiang Chang's cousin, Wang Yong, is itching for a mate. Young male macaques are known to engage in more sexual behaviors, like masturbating or inspecting other monkeys' genitals, than any other troop members. But mating is what they want to do most. Wang Yong approaches a few adult females, but none of them are interested. Fresh into adulthood, he doesn't have any social standing. They won't risk the wrath of the dominant male Zilong for a lowly-ranked monkey like him. When babies reach adulthood in macaque societies, the paths of male and female young adults diverge. Females tend to stay with the troops they were born in after they become adults. As for the males, they often leave their natal troops for greener pastures, in hopes of finding accepting mates or even a troop to lead. It's no different for Wang Yong. But this sad moment of leaving home is important for the survival of his species. When male Tibetan macaques move to different groups and mate, they promote genetic diversity and help keep macaque populations healthy. This strengthens Emperor Zilong's position as the troop leader. Less young males means less potential threats to his crown. As he approaches, lower-ranked monkeys of both sexes present their backsides in submission and groom him to please him further. Many of the female macaques are looking to cement their positions in the family. Gaining the favor of the dominant male increases their social status, helping them gain his protection and avoid passive-aggressive overtures from other macaques. But in spite of all his power as emperor, there is one thing that Zilong cannot protect his family from, the cold embrace of death. The injured infant has died from its wounds. Her mother mournfully carries the body around, unwilling to accept that her child has passed away. It's an expression of grief for macaque mothers that lose their babies in an untimely fashion. This mourning behavior can continue for up to three months until the baby's body has decomposed. It's finally time to say goodbye.
A cool breeze signals the start of autumn. Fruits ripen on the cliffside trees of Mount Wangshan. It's the season of abundance. For the immature youngsters, autumn's lazy days are for eating and having fun. Qiang Qiang and his friends play often, getting more confident at navigating Mount Wangshan's tall trees. As for the adults, autumn is another season for love. Zilong, the ruler of the troop, is more than happy to mate with every single female in the group. The females let Zilong have his way. After all, having more children increases their rank in the group. And mating more means a higher chance of giving birth. Of course, they don't have to restrict themselves to just one partner. Females often mate with many different males, even when they aren't in heat. It's autumn on the majestic Mount Wangshan. Home to this 38-strong troop of Tibetan macaques. Much like in human societies, sex is an important part of their relationships. It's mating season, and Emperor Zilong gets first pick of all the females. But females don't restrict themselves to just one partner. Mating with more males means that potential fathers often don't know which children are theirs. There is a good reason for this secrecy. Infanticide is an ugly fact of life as a monkey. Dominant males, in particular, sometimes kill the offspring of other males to reduce competition and ensure their own children survive. So it's in the best interests of mother and child that any potential fathers are kept in the dark. To facilitate mating with many males, female macaques synchronize their mating behaviors distracting the emperor while others sneak off to mate with lower-ranked males. But these secret rendezvous aren't without their risks. If the emperor catches any member of his harem with another male, the punishment is swift and severe. Tibetan macaques are considered highly intelligent. Besides vocalizing and calling out to each other, they use facial expressions and gestures to signal their feelings, like hugging and pretending to bite each other. And just like in human societies, staring can cause a fight. These two males have gotten into a bit of a scrap. The retreating monkey knows he's losing and waves a white flag, baring his teeth. With this simple gesture, the fight is over. Macaques bare their teeth as a sign of submission. In a big family, conflicts happen frequently. It's no wonder Tibetan macaques are experts at reconciliation. They sometimes participate in a strange behavior known as mounting. While mounting looks a lot like mating, these two males are not attempting to make baby macaques. Rather, in macaque society, mounting another monkey is a display of dominance. 
allowing yourself to be mounted is one of submission, falling in line and keeping the peace. Harmony within the family ensures the troops' survival. Mount Huangshan is home to over 450 Tibetan macaques, and everyone wants the best food available. Kiwi fruit grows on vines that wind themselves up trees in the forest. Native to China, the plants of this exotic fruit grow especially well on hills and in ravines making Mount Wangshan a perfect place for them to thrive. This sweet furry fruit is full of healthful vitamins and is a tasty treat for a macaque. Unsurprisingly, the hillsides where the kiwi fruit grows are highly sought after territories. And this can sometimes lead to war. Another troop has invaded the family's camp in pursuit of fruit. Spotting the enemies, one of the troop's watchmen screams out a warning. This fierce fight could be devastating for both sides even deadly. Intruders have entered this 38-strong macaque troops territory in hopes of taking control of this area with a highly coveted prize, the wild Wangshan kiwi fruit. Long's troop fiercely fights off the intruders. They've won the battle. The forest regains its calm as the fight ends. But the war has caused some casualties. Even the young ones were not spared. This is the first time that Jiang Jiang witnesses the horrors of war. He hid in the trees for safety, only coming out after the battle was over. But now, it's time to help. Licking wounds helps to speed up blood clotting. And saliva contains an enzyme that attacks bacteria, helping to defend against infection. Licking others' wounds also improves social bonds, encouraging their bodies to release oxytocin, a hormone that promotes wound healing. The monkeys fill their bellies with the spoils of victory. This will serve them well as the weather takes a turn for the worse. A winter chill blows through the Yellow Mountains. In this striking landscape, temperatures can suddenly dip below freezing. Few humans dare venture here in this season. Even with their long, dense fur, the Tibetan macaques struggle to warm up in the cold. While some animals go into hibernation to preserve their strength, Tibetan macaques are active all year round. 
but there's something very important that they need to keep their energy up in these excruciating winter months. Food. And right now, that's a scarce resource. Tibetan macaques can lose over five kilograms during the winter. That's almost a third of their entire body weight. When food is scarce, they begin to burn off the fat they stored during autumn as energy. Tiang Tiang, still learning to survive all on his own, faces his biggest challenge yet. Finding food in this harsh climate. So far, he's had no luck. The whole troop needs food. Haunted by hunger, Zilong makes a daring decision to take his troop down to the humans' farms to search for food. The monkeys cautiously descend upon the farms. Sneaking in, they find a treasure trove. The field is full of starchy radishes, planted to help prepare the fields for next year's farming season. For the desperately hungry, these calorie-dense roots are valuable nutrition. But humans are protective of their territories too. This is not the first time animals have invaded their farm. To protect their produce, the farmers set up a trap. This female macaque is unlucky as her fellow troopmates run back to the safety of the forest. She tries desperately to escape. But the more she pulls, the tighter the trap closes. Can she make it back to her troop, alive? Winter settles in on Mount Wangshan. The lack of food has forced the whole troop of Tibetan macaques out of their comfort zone. Descending into human territory, they search for food on the farms. But this desperate search is not without its risks. This female monkey has gotten herself trapped with no way of getting loose. But these traps were meant for bigger animals like wild boar, and not this primate thief. The farmer releases her, and she heads straight for the forest. In the middle of December, heavy snow starts to descend on the mountains. Coupled with strong mountain winds, these sub-zero temperatures make this the toughest part of the year for these macaques. It's hard to find food among all this snow. They spread out across the mountain, wandering far away from their home ground. During this difficult time, these monkeys will eat anything they can find. No fruits adorn the trees, and there are no young leaves in sight. 
All there is to eat are difficult to digest foods like bark, roots and mature leaves. They will be lucky to find any fruits or leaves left from autumn. The monkeys search slowly and carefully, preserving as much energy as they can. Tiang Tiang needs to find food quickly. It's every monkey for himself now. And he would be wise to keep any of his discoveries on the down low. The emperor doesn't take kindly to any monkey caught withholding rations. But the winter does bring with it little bundles of joy. After almost six months of pregnancy, these macaque mothers have given birth. They clutch their newborns tightly, keeping them warm in their arms. In the first weeks of their life, newborns spend over 95% of their time pressed against their mother's chest. But this calmness will not last long. Soon enough, these babies will turn into juveniles, spending their time playing around in the trees. Social life in macaque society goes on in spite of the harsh winter. The season is no reason to slack on keeping up appearances. And the most social monkeys are the ones who are welcomed into the biggest huddles helping them to keep warm. Another year passes on Mount Wangshan. Zilong remains in power, successfully fending off all attempts to take his throne. For now, Tiang Tiang has made it to his fourth birthday learn the skills he needs to survive as a respected member of macaque society. These trying mountains will be the stage for the rest of his life, which could last over 20 years. Nature will challenge him season after season. But as long as he continues to put what he's learned to good use, he will thrive and might even lead his own troop someday.